All right, so what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at crypto mats, how we can create them in Cinema 4D, render them out of Redshift, and then utilize them in After Effects for compositing purposes. Now, it can be a bit um, confusing, so hopefully this video will help clear things up, and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are in Redshift. I have some new render settings to go through and do this. And the first place I'm gonna start is the save section here. Uh, now you don't need to save out an image from this, uh, but if you were trying to you know, render this out for real, then you probably would be saving out a beauty pass and I can do a PNG eight bits uh, as well. I personally prefer to output my beauty separately and not have it be a part of a multi-pass EXR or anything like that, uh, more for file size purposes than anything else. And that's actually one of the downsides of crypto mats is file size and how large they are compared to puzzle mats. Um, for this multi-pass image here though, the main thing I'm concerned with is the path. So, you know, I, you can see, um, I'll even name this MP underscore just so we can differentiate this. I don't typically do that. Um, the format here can be a PNG 16 bits as well because uh, these this will not apply to my crypto mat. What I want to do is go to the Redshift section, and I swear you used to be able to access the AOV manager from right here in, in Cinema 4D R26. So if anybody knows how I can get that back in um, 2023, that would be great. Saves me some clicks. And, and then here, we do have this option here where it's our file name, and I'll come back to this here in a second. Um, we also want to click Show AOV Manager, drag in our crypto mat, and we're gonna go through and set this up. We can have the colors or the different masks or mats be created by the object name or material name. I suppose you could also use object IDs, but if you go through and set all of those up, you're probably better off using puzzle mats, perhaps, or user attribute. Though if you're using those, you're probably not watching this video because you're a bit too advanced. If you have a lot of objects, turning up the depth can help. Uh, and then what you'll see is this multi-pass output section and our direct output section. This multi-pass section is really for all of our AOVs, but it does not apply to our uh, crypto mat. Crypto mats are a bit special. I wish this would work. Um, and hopefully at one point, at some point they will get it to be integrated there, but um, crypto mats have to be output as their own separate file. So we can go ahead and uncheck this, but that is how you end up with a multi-layered EXR where you have a bunch of AOVs all saved into the same multi-pass layered image. Okay, so I do want this direct output. And notice how it's showing a lot of things here, a lot of information. It's saying the path, it's telling us the effective path here. Um, but what's confusing about this is, you know, really the only thing we might want to change is this pass, and that's to affect the file name. But right now the file name is really long. It's essentially the name of my Cinema 4D file. Okay, and that's where coming back to your Redshift settings in the AOV section are important. I just get rid of that first part, the token for project, and that's all these are, different tokens. Um, you can see the name has been shortened significantly, and that's more in line with what I would want, just you know, AOV cryptomat. I mean, you could even go shorter and just add like an underscore if you really wanted to, and if you wanted to separate the um, frame number from the file name, just add an underscore there. So that's it, right? You need to have something here for the pass, for the file name. This is the base file name. And then the actual path it's saving to is right here. So it's super, super confusing, okay? Um, but that's really it. Now, just for comparison purposes, I do wanna create a puzzle map just so we can see the difference, okay? Um, Multi-pass, the output section is not gonna really matter here because I'm saving as a PNG, okay? I can go ahead and render this. We'll be able to see my puzzle mat. And when this finishes rendering, we will be able to see the files uh, that it creates. Now I wanna point out that uh, rendering a puzzle mat, or I'm sorry, a crypto mat actually does add more time to our renders, okay? So it's not like puzzle mats where they're, for the most part, don't add too much time. You know, crypto mats can add a decent amount. And I don't know the exact amount. Um, be pretty easy to find out. So let's just check this out and get to the bottom of it. So we can see 32 seconds right there. 
and we'll see with this one if it's any faster. I sus suspect it will be, but how much faster is really anybody's guess, okay? But we can see, you know, it's going quite a bit faster. So what is that, 22? Yeah, so we saved 10 seconds per frame by not having a crypto map. Definitely something to think about and if it's worth the additional render time, you know, 10 seconds per frame, you know, if I have a, I don't know, that that's kind of a toss up. But here's something else worth considering. Okay, file size. Crypto mat here is eight megabytes versus a puzzle mat that is 49. Okay, now granted, um, this is just a single frame. It's not even 1920 by 1080. Okay, and if we were using a full HD image, then it would take even longer to render, but the image size would be longer as well. Just so we can compare that, let's do one more render here. But while that's um, rendering, why don't I get ready to hop over into um, After Effects since that's where we're going to be using this. Now, in After Effects, um, what we're gonna do is start by importing our images here. Okay, and while these are old ones, I can still work with them. Okay, and well, we'll go ahead and do this. It's probably gonna freak out at some point, but there's my beauty pass, and here is my crypto map. Now, if you look at the crypto map, you might notice, well, nothing. Okay, so uh, that can be a bit strange. In order to actually use the crypto map, we come over here and add the crypto map effect from the 3D channel section. And when we do that, that's when we should see uh, our colors here. Now, notice we still don't see through the glass. Okay, so that's not gonna happen. All right, and it looks like those images finished. So let's change our composition size here to 1920 by 1080. Okay, and double check those file sizes. So now we're up to 16 megabytes. Okay, I've seen crypto mats up to um, 100 megabytes. So that's one of the reasons why I don't use them is just how large of a file size they are. And, you know, if I'm doing an animation, the file size there can add up really quickly. So not only that, it, I feel like it also slows down After Effects having such a, a large image size, you know, sequence that I'm working with. But we've added the crypto mat effect here. And now you can see, um, I can select really any part of this and turn it into a map, okay? So um, that's what it's doing right now with it set to colors. Let's just reset this and you can see I'm able to click on any part of this and I can hold shift as well to add to this, okay? So you don't have to use just a single part, you can add to a selection um, as well as subtract by holding alt. Okay, so that's all really useful stuff, but let's say um, you're done making your selection from this crypto mat layer. You can then switch it to mat only, and there you have it. There's your actual mat. Now, there's a few different ways you can actually use this mat, but the one I personally have used the most is using it as a track mat. So in order for something to work as a track mat, track mat it has to be directly above it, okay? And then I can choose that option uh, from my track mat, Drop down, I want Luma Mat. Luma Mat's gonna use black and white values. Alpha Mat will use transparency values. And then when you can also invert it. Uh, now, I will say I've seen in uh, that the beta version of After Effects that they're making it so track mats can be any layer, not necessarily the one right above. So that will make things a lot more interesting. But there you go. There's my track, my uh, crypto mat all set up. I can take my beauty pass, drop it underneath to kind of fill in the rest. And now I can apply unique effects, say such as, um, you know, a levels, okay? Where I can now brighten up just this part of our image. Now keep in mind, you're maybe noticing here, it's not gonna work through transparency, okay? Now that is actually something you can set up in a puzzle map, okay? If back in cinema, right, my puzzle map, 
And I don't think we have anything set up. Let me see what ID I have going on here for. Okay, so let's just make this four. If you turn on reflect and refract IDs, um, it will take, Redshift will take into account reflection and refraction in those. And while that's not always a good thing, I do at least want to show you that it is uh, an option. Okay, and so we'll let that render really quickly. Um, but that can be a way around that issue when it comes to you know modifying colors or things like that um, with transparency. Now, in the grand scheme of things, if I'm working with a, a crypto mat or, or any kind of thing like this, um, there's a possibility I'm not going to be able to do something like this, change the color so drastically because of the reflections. However, in this scene, um, it's a bit unique because really that red is the only color. So rather than kind of do it with that crypto mat as a, a track mat, I could apply it to a, a um, hue and saturation and adjust it, you know, this way as well to a certain extent right, without doing too much to the rest of the colors since there really, there isn't too many other colors here. At least it gives me a little bit more flexibility. Things start to look a bit strange, okay? But that's maybe a little bit more uh, of a, gives me a little bit more control that way. Now back in um, Cinema, if I used my puzzle mat, notice how um, we are seeing through that transparent material. Notice how the reflections um, are also blue. So puzzle mats do have that advantage, right? Um, and it's right here, just reflect refract IDs where crypto mats do not have that type of option. So that is a limitation. And you know, while I do think crypto mats are great, um, I usually don't need uh, to be able to create a map for every single thing in my scene. And that's, you know, just not something I typically need. That That is, a benefit of crypto mats is that if I do decide that, okay, then, you know, I don't have to re-render. I don't have to go back and set up, you know, any more puzzle mats. Everything is, is already here, but typically I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to need to adjust after the fact. Okay. Change the colors or modify the colors, apply other unique effects, make something glow, you name it. Okay. I'll say one last thing about working with, um, crypto mats and all that stuff like this, let's change the composition setting size back down since I re-rendered at that smaller size. Don't need this anymore. But let's say I wanted to make uh, the red glow since that's a very common thing here. I feel like I was just a little bit off with my composition size. Oh, well, uh, maybe it was my render size, the images. Oh, 1290, so that's kind of funny. But uh, if you try to make this glow, this beauty pass, right? it's not really going to work. And I can just add a, you know, optical glow here. Um, it'll make the actual part of my image brighter, but it's still cutting it out the exact same. And so that is not going to give me a very good glow. So in order to make something glow, you have to pre-compose. Okay. Or at least that's the easiest way I know how to um, do this. So call this button glow. Now that this is a single layer, it has transparency associated with it. The actual track matting using the crypto mat is happening inside here. Now I can apply um, a glow to this. Let's solo that. Optical glow. And just went, switch the alpha channel option to um, preserve, actually not preserve original. That's kind of what was happening before. Uh, extend or actually generate. Um, I'm not sure the difference. They, they look very similar to me, but there, now we have our glow and, you know, can increase the size a little bit if you wanted to see it a bit more. So that's some additional work since glows are something I do quite a bit. Um, it means I have to create extra pre comps. It means I have to create multiple versions of my, um, you know, my crypto map with different masks, different selections. So like, while they have some advantages, they're they're not the end-all be-all. And, um, you know, factoring in the image sizes, it's why I don't use them uh, maybe as much as I used, definitely not as much as I used to or, you know, all that often um, these days. But 
that's all I have for this video. Let me know if there's anything else you wanna see and take care.